Okay, this video is supposed to be a step-by-step -step of how to separate the cal harness from with the EFI components that you'll need to do the 2FE conversion. Um, this is for the line cruisers that aren't already equipped with the wiring harness ready for the fuel injection system. Um, so just to get brief a little bit on how how the wiring all works in these systems. You have one harness that's all standalone. It's this EFI harness right here. And uh, there's nothing you need to modify with this. It's all it's standalone from the rest of the harness. Um, and then the rest of the connections that you need are part of the cal harness, which includes everything that's going under the dash, all the fuse block and everything. And so if you choose to keep the 60s or the 40s or whatever lankers you're using, if you, if you choose to keep that harness stock and not replace it with this whole cal harness, um, like I'm doing, then you want to you want to separate all the EFI parts out of this out of this big harness. And I wish I had uh, given a video before while the harness was still intact and everything, but I didn't. So what you want to do first, there's a, a little bit more briefing, I guess. On the 88 year, they uh, they had this two wire connector here and this five wire connector here the interface with the cal harness on the 89 and 90 years they just had one big seven wire connector this green one here this solid green is for the coolant temp and then this green and red stripe just go to the uh, airflow meter um, so yeah let's just give a little background um, so the main portion of this video is just going to be about what I did to separate all of the fuel injection components off of this cal harness and there's lots of ways to do this and uh, I'm not saying that my way was the best way but it should work for me I haven't tested it out yet but I'm confident that it should work so what I did first is uh, I looked at this connector here that goes into the ECU and I, I guess first before that I took the whole harness apart I, d I undid all the tape and I traced each wire, found out where it led to, and basically um, I just tagged them and cut every other wire. There's 50, there's about 53 of them that were not part of this series. And this is a must. You need to get all of these diagrams. I have them in my link. It's on uh, post number 46. And... Uh, to me, they're absolutely essential to be able to do this. Anyway, so after you find out what you need from here, the wires that you'll, the wires that this all lead to, um, the connections that you'll be keeping. This connection here it goes to the circuit opening relay. This connection here, which is uh, the EFI main relay, and to my knowledge, if at least if you're doing it this way, those are the only two relays you'll need off of the FJ62. Um, excuse me, this is this is the uh, EFI main relay. It's one with four four wires going into it. This five wire connector is what interfaces with the EFI harness. Um, and by the way, it should be in a different place, so if it doesn't look like mine, it's probably right. Um, anyway, coming off from here, this is going towards the engine. And uh, everything that's coming this way is going under the dash um, towards the steering wheel and all the uh, all the switches that go there and everything. So the connectors I ended up with, as I was saying, those three: the uh, your airflow meter connector here, your coil and igniter connector here, coming on the other side. We can take this out of the way now. It's much, much simpler without all that. So on this side, these two connectors go to the VSVs or the VCVs that are um, they're on the bracket that's connected on the on the driver's side fender, and uh, 
that's actually it. So I think what I'll start with are the wires that come off to this come off to this side that I changed basically. So on the stock setup, you have your main ignition wire. It's at least with uh, this harness. Some of the some of the wires on these diagrams were not the same colors. And so I'll let you know which ones they are. But the big black the big black wires with the blue stripe, they're all for ignition. And they came up this way. You had a big one that's coming from your it was coming from the main relay. And it connected up with two other small ones. I'll show you. I'll show you how it all connected. So this is this is the factory splice right here. This one went directly to the key and the second biggest one went over to the fuse block, fuse panel, and it fused over to the smallest ignition cable that went to the ECU. And I'll I'll show you what it looks like on the fuse block. Is these two right here. So instead of that, because because I'm using as much of the 60s original harness that I can, I decided to put these fuses in line towards the engine. And so I brought I brought all of those ignition wires down towards the engine. And I spliced in I splice in right here an inline fuse. And on this side of the splice, I believe that I I believe I didn't even do anything to it, actually. On this side of the splice. I apologize. I have to kind of remember what I did. Basically I put the uh the other two wires, the one that goes to the ECU and the other that goes to the igniter. The next wire that I changed up, um, there's a four-wheel drive signal. It's the yellow with the black stripe. And I believe it's unnecessary. I don't know yet, so I didn't cut it away. But the factory harness has, it splits, one leads to the one leads to the solenoid switch that the 62 uses and the other goes to the indicator light and switch. And so I cut that away. If I need it at all, I'll just tap it into the four-wheel drive indicator light, but um, I don't think that'll be necessary. Um, okay. The next one is the, the coolant temp sensor. It goes, it starts like I said, with this plug, and it's a solid green wire, and it runs all the way up into the instrument cluster off before before everything's taken away. It goes up to the instrument cluster, and uh, I decided it's more more work to keep that, and so I'm just going to cut that off and use the stock coolant temp sensor wire. Um, I think last of all is the tachometer wire. Um, it's a solid black one and it splices it comes it starts off on this igniter wire and I think that what I'll just do is use the uh, tachometer wire on the 60 and just tap it into this harness right here and so I, I just cut the tachometer wire away um, That leaves us with this. Um, the the di the diagrams, excuse me. They uh they had a yellow and orange striped wire that goes up to the check engine light. On this harness, the diagrams and this harness are both for an 88 line cruiser, but this is one of the wires that was color coded differently. So on this harness, it's yellow with the orange stripe, and on the diagrams, it's yellow. I'm sorry. 
On the diagrams, it's yellow with an orange stripe, and on this harness, it's yellow with a white stripe. Here's the uh, the stop signal wire. I think it's used for the EGR system. I'm not positive though. It's tapping into the brake system, and so I'm just going to uh, let it tap underneath the brake pedal switch so that when the brake lights go on, this wire gets fed with power and the ECU will take care of that. This wire here is for the fuel pump. It used to go up with all of those and into the rear harness. And I think that's a blue connector, a big blue one.